Hi, Greg. Hi, Harvey. How are you this morning? I'm good, and yourself? I, I am doing good. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning on Film Fiend. Are you the busiest man in the film industry and television? I don't know. I'm pretty busy. <laughs> But you know what? All for a good cause, Greg. You know, I love the movie. I love the movies I've been working on, and especially this year, I love my week with Marilyn. It's so much fun, so entertaining. I feel I produced it personally with David Parfit, who I did Shakespeare in Love with. It's just something really personal for me in that movie. Yes. Sir. Well, I looked, and I mean, you had like over 239 nine credits, you know, of producer, executive producer. I was like, when does this guy ever have any time to sleep? You know, and then you're, you're making this movie, you're, you're taking your personal time to come out and kind of promote it. And when you take on a subject or a person like Marilyn Monroe, that everyone has, you know, a certain idea of what she was, you're kind of showing maybe a different side with uh, the story uh, of Colin Clark that, you know, he published like this this extra week of his real true thoughts with her. Yeah, I mean, I think this is an incredible idea to me that a 23-year-old boy works on a movie with Marilyn Monroe. She breaks up with her husband, you know, Arthur Miller, because he can't take the pressure of being kind of Mr. Monroe. And this boy tells her the truth, and he's 23, and she says, I'm 30, I've been married three times. I, I never had a date. I had my last date when I was 16. And it's kind of like this incredible romantic, they're like two teenagers, you know. They go skinny dipping, they, you know, go to the library. I mean, just so romantic and enchanting, their relationship. And I love watching the audience laugh because it's funny too, and I'm really proud of the movie. Well, that's good. I mean, it, it, it looks beautifully shot. I mean, everything, it was just, it looks like it, it's it's just it's so well done, and then you know just the way that you see. I, I just like being able to see maybe a more human side. I guess is, is the way that the best way I could say it. Yeah, you know, I was offered the other movie. You know, there was like two projects. One was the really serious suicide Marilyn Monroe, and you know, it, it just so beat the subject to death, literally. You know that uh, I just I couldn't take that. I prefer to do a movie where like we did the King's Speech last year, where you have insight into a character and you learn something new. And in this movie, you see that Marilyn is so wanting to have a normal relationship with somebody, wanting to have kids, wanting to have a life. This boy offers her lifeline, but she, give, you know I mean? But, but the temptation is to be Marilyn Monroe, the world's biggest movie star. It's really something enchanting. And I think, you know, I make two kinds of movies. I make the Quentin movies and the train spottings. And then, and then as, you know, my mom says, I make the King's Speech or Shakespeare in Love. This is more for the audience that likes those movies. Well, you can make those wonderful moves for your for your mom. But since you brought brought up the Quentin, uh, I was reading: Is there any truth? And this is this will make me the happiest person in the world right now. Will there be a, a Kill Bill vol Volume Three? There will be, you know, and yes. uh, and there will be. The answer is yes, and you know. All right. You remember that little girl in the kitchen? <laughs> yes, sir, right? I do. Okay, yes. just just remember her and remember that we had this conversation. And of course, I'm sure nobody's listening. So. Uh, of course not. No, no one's listening. <laughs> so it's just between at you all. and me, Greg, right? Yeah. Yes, re exactly. Re remember what I said in a few years from now, the girl in the kitchen. You'll play back this interview and I'll come to St. Louis when we, you know, when we premiere the movie and we'll, we'll play I will back be waiting. this tape, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, with all of your busy time and and things like that and all of your movies, we, we ask kind of one question that, that's constant. In your spare time, which I'm sure is very small, is there something that a movie or a show that you can watch over and over if you have a second or it comes on? Is there one movie that you can just watch over and over? Well, I'll tell you, in my house, I'm the father of four girls, ah. and which is which is a losing battle every day, <laughs> Greg. You know, especially as they get into their teenage years. Yes. You really learn to, you know, what a white flag means and surrender. So the thing about my... The thing about my girls is, you know, they, you know, the movie business, they kind of grew up around it. They're, they're unimpressed, you know, so, and they hate black and white movies, or at least they did. So I couldn't figure out how to get them to watch a black and white movie. Finally, I capitulated. I said, guys, make it through this one movie. And if you make it through, okay, you choose your store, you choose your store. We'll go to the mall tomorrow. Everybody gets, you know, one, one present. So I showed them Roman Holiday. I got a print and showed it to them in a, in a theater with Audrey Hepburn. 
let me tell you, they asked to see the movie again, and they gave me amnesty on buying them a present. <laughs> the amnesty didn't last long, but I will tell you that Roman Holiday is a movie that is so charming and fun. And actually, when my kids saw My Week with Marilyn, and I wrote about this a little bit, they really understood, the, you know, they said, wow, it's the princess who escapes, and the newspaper guy, you know, romances her. Hey, Dad, that's kind of like Marilyn Monroe escaping with the young boy. And I, and I said, you're absolutely right. So Roman Holiday is the, is the movie that, in our house, you know, I mean, gave me an amnesty from shopping and won the black and white <laughs> battle. Yeah, and you didn't have to, to wave any kind of white flags. You won on both sides of that. Uh, well, Mr. One, one time. One time. Well, you know, one time is better than none. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Weinstein, Harvey, we thank you Harvey. so much. Harvey, we thank you so much this morning for taking time out and joining us on Film Fiend. Just continued success uh, on my week with Marilyn. I hope it, it, it just... Everybody goes out and watches it. We encourage our audiences here in St. Louis to, to go out and watch it. And uh, in a few years, I am ready for Kill Bill Volume 3. The Girl in the Kitchen. I am waiting. Thank you so much, Harvey.